Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Arise Christian Ministries. We are so glad that you're with us upon today. Amen. So glad you've cho chosen to join us. There are a few faces that are missing in our physical audience. Today, one person said, hey, Pastor, I I'm not feeling the best uh, under the weather. And so we prayed uh, for them even now that, that God will continue to heal their body. In the name of Jesus, whatever symptom may be trying to attack their body, that God is a good God and he's a healer. And that the healing virtue of God even now will minister to the, their body in Jesus' name. Amen. And we know one family is out of town on today traveling, and we pray traveling grace and mercy as they travel back in. And we pray that, uh, that they're watching us, that they're able to join us online this morning. Amen. I'm going to go to... Uh, we'll share it on Facebook here in a second. Normally I'll piggyback off of Pastor Mary's Facebook. I know, uh, but, um, so we're good. We're good to go. Amen. Um, what else do we need to share? Any other announcements? Um, Loose the Youth is coming up. And so for those that are wanting to send your, your young people, uh, to a, a, a Holy Ghost filled anointed spirit led camp where they're ministered to on their level uh, from whatever age they're at from uh, we take ages 6 to 19 and so uh, that's coming up it's going to be a three-day experience this this summer three days we're coming just to praise God and to pour into young people and to uh, so they can go back to their homes to their community to their school and be encouraged to shine for Jesus right where they're at so that's coming up um, and I think those are all the major announcements that we have at this time. Uh, continue to pray our strength in the, in the Lord. Uh, we want to also just uh, thank God for last Sunday. Last Sunday was Mother's Day, and we pray that all the mothers in the house were blessed. I'm not sure if any of the other mothers had a chance to look through their gift items or gift bag that you got. But uh, I know Pastor Mary, uh, she was hearing the Lord as as she purchased things for the mothers just to be encouraged uh, and so uh to as she talked about last week the self-care and then the, the emergency response ve vehicle have mothers sometimes minister and always concerned about but sometimes you also need to take time to get that oil change take time to pour back into yourself and so uh we thank god for for that amen awesome um anything else as we're sharing certain things, I think that is it. I think that's it. Um, it was good to see family last week. Last week we had um, uh, Mother Wilson was in the house with us last week. Uh, pray her strength in the Lord as she travels back to Michigan here soon. Uh, continue to keep her in prayer. Uh, we thank God for the, the, uh, the beacon of light that she is to our family and all that she is to to us and even to me individually. Um, just grateful. And thank God for we had family in the building, the Jacksons, and we're here. And we thank God for even more family upon today. All right. I think that is it, Lord. Hallelujah. This is a, a, a simple song uh, that just dropped in my heart. It says, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. I don't know all the words, but that's the only part I know, like how great thou art. Uh, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. Hallelujah. How great thou art. Then sings my soul. My Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Hallelujah. God is a great God, but a great and mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he's great and greatly to be praised. Let us go before the Lord and let's step into the word so we can share what the Lord wants us to share today and receive. Amen. It's important to receive. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if you ever played catch with somebody. 
But um, did you ever throw the ball to them and they weren't expecting it and like hit them in the face or they like, hey, they hit them in the chest or whatever. Or maybe you just threw it a little bit too hard. But today we want to be able to have our hands up to catch the word of the Lord, have our hands up to surrender our will to him, have our hands up to say, God, daddy, I need you. So, so many ways, right? Hands up to catch the ball, to receive the word of the Lord. Hands up to say, hey, I surrender all. I have no hidden agenda. There's nothing behind my sleeve, right? There's nothing. I'm, I'm giving my all to you. And hands up to say, uh, daddy, uh, pick me up, right? The parents in their own kind of know about that, how, how sometimes your, your children will reach towards you and, and will want, want, want you to take them, right? And even we have pets that do the same thing. Our dog tries to nudge and do certain things. She, she wants up. She will stand on all her two legs and put her hands up. And so in that same similitude, we want the Lord to, to have his way in, in us. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for your word today. Father, speak from on high and give us something to believe. Lord, we don't live by bread alone, but your word, God, so help us to walk in your word. Help us, God, to, to, to walk this out to the best of our ability. You know what we as individuals stand in need of. So, God, we're looking to you to meet that need, to fill that need, and to minister to right where we're at. We praise you and we thank you, Father God. Flow through me, Father, so I can say what you want me to say, nothing more, nothing less. Help us to be doers of your word and not hearers only. God, we cancel any demonic assignment that's trying to come against this, this ministry, against this word, against your people who are hearing your word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Good morning, Sister Jeriel. God bless you. Amen. Yes, man, we will keep your family in prayer. Hallelujah. Definitely keeping you in prayer. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you, God. She's the woman of God you called her to be. God, we thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're we're excited. We're excited for what God is doing. And today we want to talk about for a few moments. We want to minister along the lines of uh, dry bones live again. Dry bones live again. Amen. So that's what we're going to be ministering before the Lord. And uh, as we look to Ezekiel chapter 37 here momentarily in just a little while, we'll put that on the screen. But we're going to take our time this morning. I mean, I say take our time doesn't mean that we're going to be here forever, but we are just going to take our time and just allow the Lord to flow and say what he wants to say. Amen. Dry bones live again. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. So uh, this morning, even last night, even the day before Friday, I was praying and say, Father, what do you want to say to your people? I heard crickets. I didn't hear anything. Sometimes I'm moving so fast, little Jackson, that I'm just running and running. I, I, I don't slow down enough to hear the Lord. And, and so uh, I was on Facebook the other day and a, a pastor friend of mine, he said, basically, he said, bas I think it was like he's saying, sometimes you get into a place where you're doing too much or you're doing a lot and you have to take time for self-care. You have to take time for those moments to go to that place where you know you can be rejuvenized. And for me, that moment is going to the Lord to be energized, going to him to be plugged back in. Because just like we had an Apple TV remote and the Apple TV remote was telling us on the Apple TV, it was saying 20 percent battery left. I'm like, I didn't even know this remote had batteries, right? Where do you put the batteries in? And didn't know. So I had to look it up on Google. And it said that you can plug the Apple TV remote in with the Apple T Apple phone charger. I said, ooh. So I did that and it was not the right connection. It was not the right, it wasn't connected good, something was happening. And I will say this, sometimes people think that they can get plugged in and get connected to, but they're connected to, to the wrong source. Right, they're connected to something that, something that does not have power. And so we had to go and we got another uh, connector when it got down to 10% because we thought it was charging, but it wasn't. And then we got a message this week saying phone is char uh, remote is down to 10%. After that, we weren't going to be able to control it. It's like, what did we do? So then my wife had another charger and we plugged it in. And within moments, it was back to 94%. I said, oh, praise God. Right, we were able to plug it. And it was able to become revitalized. It was able to become uh, back to where it can function. And I don't know about you, but when your battery is dwindling, yes. it's important to go to that place where you can be recharged. Yes. When you have given out all and all and all and you've done this and, do, and done that. And sometimes in my case, it's running so fast, doing so many things. It's important to go to the place where you can be recharged. 
How many people know that the Lord is a place for us to be charged, to get into his presence? And so as I was in his presence this morning, I knew my wife said, hey, do you want me to go to the church with you this morning to kind of put things back together? Yesterday we had a busy day for work and we were in another city and we were at a festival and uh, we had a lot of things going on. We came back home and we uh, put things in our building and uh, we had to go on because we had an award ceremony to go to and we had some things going on. And anyway, came to church this morning and uh, just needed some time. I said, babe, if you if you come help me, then um, I'm going to take two different vehicles because I need to spend some time with the Lord. Needless to say. As I got quiet before the Lord this morning. As I lay it out, as I just sat still before him, I heard the Lord speak. Dry bones. I saw the scripture flash, flash before my, in my spirit. Dry bones, Ezekiel 37. And I heard it. I said, Lord, is that what you want to share today? And I heard, yeah. So all that to say, let's connect. And we're going to be ministering from Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. And we'll we'll put it on the screen uh, as we get ready. I want to thank God for uh, my wife uh, being a great help to me uh, as an individual, as a husband, as a business partner, uh, as a pastor. She's my best friend and thank God for her. Yes, you're welcome. And I thank God for uh, all of you that's here. We honor our pastors, also Apostle Walter Ford and Pastor Benita Ford in Victoria, Texas, who are our spiritual pastors. Uh, we heard from them this, them this morning. We thank God for them. Thank God for the new wineskins ministries. Uh, hallelujah. But, uh, Pastor Irvin Felicia Jackson, Pastor Felicia Matthews out of uh, New Faith. And we uh, Sister Jeriel is very familiar with them. I uh, thank God for also uh, Apostle Dr. Lola Lockett. Amen. We thank God for her. And, and so we are just grateful for the new wineskins ministry. And we also thank God for each and every one of you that's here today. Join us as we step into Ezekiel chapter 37, where you whether you travel with it on your phone, your Bible or you join it on screen right here in the sanctuary. Shekinah, let's put it on the screen. Ezekiel 37 verse one. Let me find it myself. Ezekiel 37 verse one. And it says this. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me into the spirit, brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of valley. This is Ezekiel speaking. And it was full of bones. The valley that God brought him to was full of bones. Verse two. Then he caused me to pass them all around. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And indeed, they were very dry. They were dry bones. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? Can these bones that are dry, very dry, live? Verse four. Again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord God to these bones, surely I will cause breath to enter into you. And you shall live. Amen. We're going to pause here. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of the word. So we're talking about, thank you. We're talking about can these bones live, right? Can these dry bones live? And for those that like, um, that are, are kind of science fiction y, you know, you like uh, uh, sci fi type of things, this might be of interest to you. God took this prophet of the Lord by way of the spirit, took him into a valley. Uh, this is my interpretation of a valley. Don't judge me too much on my artistry. But he took him to a valley. And when I think of a valley, I think of a low place. The Bible says, uh, yea, thou walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. So I think of a valley as a, a, a low place in between like some mountains, right? It brought me through the valley. And then this, okay, let's draw the sun. This is my elementary type of first grade drawing, right? Kaka, kaka. That little bird flying. All right. And so in the valley, right? In this valley, God brought the man of God, Ezekiel. 
he brought him to he brought him to this valley. And in the valley were bones. Them bones, them bones, them dry bones. You see, like the ankle bone connected to the foot bone, right? These bones, and the bones weren't this big, but imagine a bone, right? All right, whether that's an eye or the letter I, or whether it's a bone, it's imagine that bone. And so, if a bone is there, this valley is full of bones. Well, what do you think of when you see bones? And these weren't just like dog bones. They weren't doggy treats. They weren't dog biscuits. They weren't cattle. They weren't dinosaur bones. These bones were men, possibly women, that had been deceased. I don't know if you've been in a situation in your life where people have counted you out and called you dead, that you are deceased, where the, no, nah, nothing good nothing good's going to happen in their life. Right? Or sometimes you've been in, in a rut. Maybe you've been to the mountaintop, as Dr. King talked about and preached. And maybe you're just going through a plateau or a valley and it seems like there are challenges happening. If you're in that situation, you are not hopeless. You are not alone. So God took the men of God to this valley. And in the valley, it was a valley full of bones. And these bones weren't just bones. What type of bones were they? There was an adjective attached to it. They were dry bones, right? They were dry bones, as my wife is saying in the back. They were dry bones. So meaning, this tells me, that these bones have been there for a little while, Sarah. They have been there. You have like the ankle bone. You have the, the collar bone, the clavicle. You have the, the bones in the finger. You have the, even the, the three millimeter bone inside your ear. What's that called? Uh, but that, uh, the cochlear. Yeah, I believe it's cochlear. You have these, these bones, the rib cage, right? You have all these bones. How many bones are inside of a body? 206 bones. They say that the bones make up, good job, 15% of your entire body. And so some type of way, these people in the valley of dry bones are no more. And God is saying to the men of God, says, hey, you see the situation and it looks hopeless. That all these people in the valley of dry bones have, are deceased for a certain reason. It looks hopeless. And he says, son of man. Can these bones live again? And what does Ezekiel answer in chapter 37 of verse number, I believe it's four. He said to me in verse three, son of man, can these bones live? Verse four. And so he answered uh, in verse three, oh, Lord, God, you know. God, you know, if these bones live. Guess that was the right answer. See, Ezekiel, God took Ezekiel to a situation and he said, what do you see? Do you see the dead, the downtrodden and that is hopeless? Or do you see there's life? I want to share this. I'm going to speak in generalities because we can't get too much into detail. But my wife and I, we've been looking at a few places, been looking at some things and thinking about and just being being led by the spirit. And we looked at some things over the last few months in different buildings and different places that were as we're expecting growth. And so some of the build, buildings we walked in, they looked like we just want to walk in and walk right out. Ooh, they had smells to them. They were all gutted out. It's like, man, this is, is going to have to be really rehabbed because there's a lot of stuff. There's one building in Luling, Texas that we looked at over. I would say 16 years ago, this building was a two-story building. It used to be a mortuary. It's a two-story building. It's not in the best part of the neighborhood or the city, some would say. It's a fine place. We didn't live that far from it when we lived in Lulu. But in, in that building, it's like it's asbestos. In that building, it's a mode in the building. The, the structure may be good, but there's some things in it that kind of needs to be taken out. There's some musty smells inside of there. There's just a lot of, it's a major rehab. And as I looked, that, that building's been up for sale for at least 20 years. I looked online here recently, I saw that it was still up for sale. They're asking 100000 for it. They're asking 100000 for it, and they said this is a good property for investment, but mind you, it needs major rehab, it says online. Major rehab. 
But the structure is good. The bones of the building are good, but it needs some work. People may walk into that building and say, ooh, it's, first of all, it smells. Second of all, it's dark. Are these stairs going to be able to hold me if I go up the stairs as they look at the rooms and what's going on? Am I going to fall through? Do I have a lawsuit? Are all these things happening? You can look at the building and say this building is, and look at the neighborhood that it's in and say, ooh, I don't want to touch this. Nothing good is everything. Might as well tear that down and start something new. That, that's one mind. Or the other mind can look at it and say, look, I see growth. I see potential. I see how we, if we just came here and we did this and we just did that, I see how it can be an awesome place for the community. Now, it does take some finances to do that. It does take some uh, skilled people to come together and to hire to be part of the team. But it's kind of like what God was asking Elijah to do. Elijah, you see this situation? They've been dead for a while. I don't know if they have been dead for 20 years. I don't know if it's stinking, musty. I don't know what the situation is, but it's dry. And it's in the valley, and they're not getting the support. He asked him, son, what do you think about this situation? Can these dry bones live? And he said, Lord, you know. Have you been in a situation where you seem like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get out? I don't know if this is the best situation or Lord, I don't see it's, it's dry. I'm just going through the motions. I'm just going through the motions and I, I, I need some kind of support. I need some a, a jump. I've been in this situation for a while. I need a jump. We have a vehicle, a vehicle at home right now that needs a jump. It's been sitting for a little while. And I went to start it and it wouldn't start. The battery needs a jump. And some people have been in the same place, the same mindset, just complacent, complacent. Or you didn't see a way out and you need a jump. Use the word of God today to have him rejuvenize you, to reinvigorate your life and, and to, to cause you to live again. So as, as we look here, good morning, uh, Sister Molina. Good morning, Sister Rosemary. Uh, God bless you all. Thanks for joining us from your respective places. So he's looking at that situation that seems hopeless, and he says, can these bones live again? And he said, Lord, you know. So since he says, okay, cool, we're on the same page. I, I, I see somebody, I'm using somebody that is not counting the situation dead. I'm using somebody that has faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Let's go to Romans chapter 12. I hear you, Father. And let's talk about faith just for a moment. Because it takes faith. It took faith for, 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 for Ezekiel to be able to say, I see these bones. Lord, you ask me if they can live? Father, you know. I, Father, you know. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12 that he's given every man a measure of faith. So if you say, Bob, I don't have faith. Faith, Pastor David. The Bible even talks about if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to the mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and it shall be done. Let's look at Romans chapter 12, verse 1, as we put it on the screen. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. So we bring our body to the Lord and say, God, use me. Father, I'm yours. Have your way. I realize that I, I don't have it all together. I haven't made my mind up to say I, I, I've arrived. Father, I need you for my very existence. Lord, work or work in me. I'm yours, Lord. I'm your servant. I work for you. You are, are the one who, who I, I live for. And I know I get my reward from you, Father. It says in verse two, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that she may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For verse three says, I say through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to, 
but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. God has given everybody a measure of faith. So as we come to the Lord, as we realize that we, we need God, I don't know about you, but how many people need the Lord? I need God. I need him for my very existence. I need him. I was even like talking to the Lord. I was doing homework last night. I'm going back to school. I'm taking two classes right now at the same time. And that is, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a load. But I'm saying, God, I need you. And uh, have your way in, in what I'm putting down. I have some homework that I had to do tonight or today, and it's due at the, by midnight. I'm saying, God, this first class, I got this. But the second class, I'm going to have to dig a little bit more for this assignment. I need you. I need your help. Right? I need you. And so it's important that we are, are, are casting our cares on him. It's important that we are coming to him and casting our cares out to be renewed in the presence of the Lord to be renewed through his word. He's given every man a measure of faith. So I, I looked up Arizona State. They had something about bones, and we were talking about bones today. And so as I looked, but they said, it's easy, as we go back to Ezekiel chapter 37, it's easy to think that bones are dry and dead. But that couldn't be further for the truth. Bones are alive. We have a, a, a medical technician or someone that, that's familiar with, with the, the body in our, in, in our, in our, our sanctuary. And even as I, I broke my finger um, about a year ago, and bones, the, the, the Arizona says that, that they help. There's living cells that are busy growing and repairing themselves inside of the bones. My daughter had a fracture that we didn't know about, and the bones are preparing themselves. They're living cells. They're not just dry sticks. They're living cells. Communicating with other parts of the body. Arizona State goes on to say that bones are, have several functions. One is to support support the body. It's like a frame to a house. It helps to, to support the body. It also provides protection. Bones provide, provide protection for certain organs like the heart. Right. As uh, you have your your rib cage here, like the brain, as you have the, 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 the bone of the skull protecting the vital organ. Bones also help with movement. Right. As you have the the uh, they fit together like the puzzle and the sinews and the tendons, they help move certain things. Right. You have that. And so in this valley of dry bones, all those had whittled away until it was dry. I looked up sometime, I believe Arizona State or another entity says it takes a long time for the bones to begin to dry out. Now, when I just for those that are uh, crime watchers and follow those type of things, I was trying to be very careful when I looked up on Google. I was going to look up how long does it take bones to dry out? But then I said, huh, that kind of question will trigger people and tr tr try to trigger people to kind of look at why is he looking at the er, 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 Why is David looking this up, right? So then I'll put in Ezekiel 37, how long did the bones dry out, right? And so I had to make, okay, if you're trying to, if you're going to flash me from looking up bones, I'm not doing anything crazy, right? I'm looking for the Bible. The Bible says Ezekiel 37 talks about bones. So anyway, when I looked that up, it says sometimes it takes about nine months to, for the bones to start to, to show up and, and, and someone passes away and it goes even longer. And even it takes years for the bones to begin to dry out in certain conditions, right? And so it takes a while. So that tells me these people have been here for a while in the Valley of Dry Bones, right? And I was wanted, wanted to find out how did these people die? When we look at Ezekiel. Also in the bones, it talks about that Bones in most red and white blood cells are created where? Inside the bones. And the specialized group of cells called stem cells. I said, huh. That's why they're trying to dr drill into people's bones and do all this stuff to try to reproduce. But it's not. Science is trying to reproduce stuff that God had said don't do. Right? Science is trying to become their own God and try to do certain things. Right? It's 1.2 use it for healing, but sometimes they're taking it too far. But the bones are awesome. 
The bones are specialized. The bones have a particular purpose. So let's read on, let's read on, let's read on as we pick up in, in chapter five, as we get to our point, uh, verse five of Ezekiel. Uh, again, verse four, he's, again, says, he said to me in verse four, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus the Lord God, thus says the Lord God to these bones, surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live. So he said, I'm going to put and cause the bones to live. I'm going to put sinews on you. I said, like, sinews. I kind of know what that is. Right. But I looked it up just for sake of it. Sinews are tough bands of dense, fibrous, connective tissue that connect muscle to the bone. So not only am I going to put, I'm going to make sure that the bones are connected, but then I'm going to have the, the tough tissues that's going to connect the bones to the muscle and so forth. So you can move. Right. And then he said, I'm going to put skin upon you. He's talking to the bones. Right. Ezekiel is prophesying to the bones that to say what the Lord says. God says he's going to put skin upon you, flesh upon you, sinews upon you. And then what's going to happen? He says this. And I will put breath in you in verse six. And you shall live. Just go back on. Just try it again. I will put breath in you. Just, just whenever you pick back up, just pick back up. He says, I will put breath in you and you shall live. You shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied in verse seven as I prophesied as I was commanded and I prophesied there was a noise and a sudden rattling and the bones came together. Bone to bone came together. So the Lord began to do the impossible, but the Lord began to do the miracle. He began to put those dead things back together. Indeed, as I looked, the sin news and the flesh came upon them and the skins covered them, but there was no breath in them. And he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, say to the breath, thus say the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So that's the first indicator to me that told us how these people died. These people were slain. They were slain. They were destroyed. They were killed. They were murdered. They were destroyed some kind of way. Right. And we know that these people, if you read later on, these bones are the house of Israel. These bones are the house of Israel. These bones are the people of the Lord. And upon you, he's talking to the bones, right? Ezekiel is prophesying to the bones that to say what the Lord says. God says he's going to put a skin upon you, flesh upon you, sinews upon you. And then what's going to happen? He says this. And I will put breath in you in verse six and you shall live. Just go back on. Just try it again. I will put breath in you just, just whenever you pick back up, just pick back up. He says, I will put breath in you and you shall live. You shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied in verse seven as I prophesied as I was commanded and I prophesied there was a noise and a sudden rattling and the bones came together. Bone to bone came together. So the Lord began to do the impossible, but the Lord began to do the miracle. He began to put those dead things back together. Indeed, as I looked, the sin news and the flesh came upon them and the skins covered them, but there was no breath in them. And he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, say to the breath, thus say the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So that's the first indicator to me that told us how these people died. These people were slain. They were slain. They were destroyed. They were killed. They were murdered. They were destroyed some kind of way. Right. 
And we know that these people, if you read later on, these bones are the house of Israel. These bones are the house of Israel. These bones are the people of the Lord. And he's saying, I'm going to rejuvenize you, Israel. I'm going to cause you to live again and bring you into your own place. So as we look at this, and this plant doesn't need a whole lot of water. This plant kind of will grow on its own, right? And, and so it, it kind of takes care of itself. So I tagged a few people. Uh, cool. This plant will kind of grow on, by itself. But if there was a cold snap, and then I forgot to water it for a while, and that was all dry and decrepit and brown. It was dry, decrepit, and brown. And so I said, man, this plant is dead. I looked at it. But you know what? There was something within me that was hopeful about this plant. I didn't want this plant to be dead. I wanted this, this plant to, to live again. I, I wanted something to spring forth from this plant. So I did something in faith, and I poured water into the plant. And I watered it. And you know what? The care that I showed this plant, even though it was a dead situation, I still watered it. And a couple of days ago, I went outside and guess what? This plant is green. There's some dead stuff still there, but there's some stuff that begin to spring up and it's green and it's starting to come back. I'm like, glory to God. The cares of life and the world will want to kill and steal your joy. These people of God in the Valley of Dry Bones, they were God's people. They were chosen people. They had, were God's people who were followers of God. But there was something in the environment, there was something that took them out. So as we bring it home and make it relevant, you have to know your environment. Are there things that's in your environment that's, that's trying to take you out as a believer? When you look at the, the uh, first Kings chapter 18, let's go there. When you look at the environment, are there things that's trying to steal your joy? Are there things in your life that are trying to keep you complacent in your faith in God? Are there things in life that are sucking the life out of you where you're becoming dry, where you're in an environment where you're not getting the moisture, where you're not getting the nourishment, where you're not getting what you need? Notice your environment, and if that's your environment, you too can live again. Even though it may seem hopeless, I, I, I watered that plant even though it was dry, and it began to spring up, it began to come. It didn't happen right away, but I went out there a few days later, and it, it began to grow again. The enemy wants you to be dry bones. She wants you to, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy but first Kings chapter 18, verse 20, as we bring things to a close, this is talking about two things. First of all, I do want to remind you that the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, that death and life is in the power of your tongue. So even though you're looking at a hopeless situation that maybe might seem hopeless, there's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing beyond what God can do. You speak life into you speak those things that be not as though it were. So even though you might have somebody that might be strung out on drugs, you can say they're not a druggie. They're always going to be like that. No, that's death. That's speaking death. That's not speaking positive. So what you can say is, look, I know they're going through right now, but God is still able. God is delivering my, my per person, that person strung out. God is taking care of them. I'm not sure all what's happening behind the scenes, but God is saving that person. God is transforming that person in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that you you are will save them, that you will deliver them from that addiction, that you will heal them. Right. It's not about what you see, because in the dry bones, they were dry. They were dead. But God told the prophet, how are you going to look at the situation? 
What is going to be your pronunciation over the situation? Are you going to administer a death certificate, man of God, woman of God? Or are you going to say, wait, dad, you know, God, you know what can happen. I'm trusting you. What are you telling me to do? How are you telling me to speak over the situation? How do I get reconnected back with you? Father, what do I do? And he told him to do it. He said, look, he said, speak to everything about the situation. He said, speak to the bones, then speak to the sinews, and then cause, speak that flesh is going to come back onto the flesh, the organs, and then speak to the skin to cover and protect the flesh, to cover and protect the organs, and then cause them to stand up. And there was a noise coming together, but there was not breath inside their body. They were standing. They were there. They were ready, but they were the walking dead. And God said, breathe and prophesy to the breath. Some people are the walking dead right now. They're walking. They've been hurt by situation. They're just kind of walking like they're a zombie. And they've been they've been they've been cast out, caught out by, by society. They're they're trying to it's been a while since they got a word from the Lord. Maybe they're not reading their Bible like they should. Or maybe they're just going and looking at all this stuff, but not feeding their spirit. See, men and, men and women of God, it's important that we feed ourselves daily the word of God. Yes. When's the last time you read the Bible that wasn't in church? I'm not going to ask you to answer, but you, you know. When's the last time that you read the word and it wasn't in church? Man of God, woman of God that's watching. When was the last time that you read the Bible and you weren't trying to get a message for Sunday sermon? You're reading for growth. You see, if we're going to live in these last days spiritually, not end up like these dry bones like the enemy wants us to. We have to get our nose into the word of God daily. You have to be fed daily. Your stomach lets you know when it's time to eat. Your attitude lets you know when it's time to eat. Your spirit man will let yourself also know when it's time to eat. Feed your spirit man. Because if not, it's going to dry suddenly. It's going to dry out, dry out until, guess what? Your flesh is powering your, your uh, is overpowering your spirit man. First Kings chapter, chapter uh, 18 talks about Baal, the prophets of Baal versus the prophet of God. The prophet of Baal versus the prophet of God. So verse 20, and we're going to recap this really quickly of first of Kings chapter 18. So Ahab sent for all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets. He gathered the prophets as we put it on the screen uh, together at Mount Carmel. And Elijah came to all the people and said, how long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is your God, then follow him. But the people answered not a word. Then Elijah said to the people, I alone am left a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophet are 450 men. Therefore, let let give us let them give us two bulls and let them choose one bull, bull for themselves, cut it in pieces and lay it on the wood. But put no fire under it. And I will prepare the other bull laid on the wood and put no fire under it. Then you call on the name of your, your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God who answers by fire, he is God. Camera back on. How long will you halter between two opinions? Elijah was saying. He said, people of God, how long will you play a hopscotch with God? You're going to trust God one day, but then you trust not trusting God the second day. You're going to trust God, but then you're going to trust TV. You're going to trust God, but then you're going to trust what your friends say. Are your friends backing up and saying, hey, go to the word. This is what I hear the Lord saying. Go to right. Are your friends backing you in the word or are they saying what you want to hear? Are you at a church that's speaking the word or are you at a church that's just saying what you what you want to hear? He said, people of God, how long are you going to halter between two opinions? If Baal is your God, if the devil, secular society is your God, serve them. But if God is your God, follow after God. Do it right. Do it wholeheartedly. Well, I, I, I just think I just think that even with uh, like the, lot of, in these times talking about transgenderism and we were talking about that the other day. 
And there was a, a couple bills that came across in, in the, in the uh, Texas Senate and the House about transgenderism. And one, there's one thing that's been passed where athletes that identify as a male athletes that identify as a female say, okay, I'm a male, but I want to be a female right now so I can go in a female sport and dominate. And that's not right. And they're saying that's okay in the high schools, and, but then one bill was passed saying, hey, look, that can't happen in college. If you're born a male, then you have to be in, in, in male athletics. If you're born a female, you have to be in female athletics. Right? God didn't make a mistake. If God made you male, then that's who he's called you to be. If he made you female, that's who he's called you to be. Now, if you're questioning, well, say, Pastor David, I, I, I'm a male, but I feel like I'm a female. You take that to God. You take that to your, your, your leaders and your pastors, and, and let's, let's pray about this. Let's ask God. God didn't make a mistake, right? So you go to God and say, Father, I need help. My mind is going through. I need you to fix me, right? When I was doing some things I had no business doing, I said, God, I'm thinking these thoughts. I know it's not right. I need help, right? I need you to fix me. And he did. He transformed me. So we're trying to, we can't, we can't be passive and say, okay, well, we can allow this to come in. We can, God loves everybody and he loves, he does love everybody. He loves his creation, but he's not going to love everything. He's not just going to give us a pass on our sin and say, okay, okay keep trying. Right? He's going to call us out on our, on our sin and the things we've done wrong. So we can't keep living in sin and living in dry bones and saying it's okay. We have to come to God and say, God, you can cause me to live. So the way I feed my spirit, the way I continue to live is getting in your word. It's staying connected. It's not following after other gods. And that's what happened to the dry bones. If you look, read the Bible historically, that's what happened to God's people. Every time they started following the other gods and stopped following our God, they got taken into slavery. They got taken into captivity. You read the Bible. It happened. Judges. It happened. For, uh, Second Kings. It happened. In Chronicles, it happened. In Egypt, right? In Deuteronomy talks about it. And it happened again after Christ came and rose from the dead. It happened again. Right? So historically, this happened. But the way to come back to God is that to repent of our sins. The way to come back to God is to communicate with him. Can these dry bones live? So what happened with the prophets of Baal? They were calling on their God all day. Like uh, Elijah's like, maybe your God sleep. OK, maybe just set your alarm. Maybe you need to yell louder because maybe he's sleep because he's not hearing y'all. Right. They begin cutting themselves and saying, oh, no, whatever they were doing. And their God didn't answer. Why? Because he's not a real God. But then it was Elijah's turn. And Elijah said, OK, look, I know that, I know we have the bull and we have it all cut up about the barbecue. Right. About to get, do a burnt sacrifice. And basically the way it was going to be burnt is they're calling from God, God. Put a fire under here and burn it up. So Elijah said, you know what? Let's make it let's make it a challenge for God. But it's not a challenge for God. Let's pour some water and soak it in the meat. Soak the meat. Pour water on this meat. Do it four times. They got so much water on it that the water just overflowed the meat and began to fill the trench that they had built. And Elijah called on God. He said, God, I need you to come down and, 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 and cause fire on this so they know that you are truly God versus the Baal. Baal's not God. He's fake. He didn't answer them. He's not living. And guess what? God rained down fire and burnt up the sacrifice, even though it was saturated with water. You read it right, right there in 1 Kings chapter 40. God did it. An impossible situation like the dry bones. God did it. So if you're looking at an impossible situation, according to men's standards, God can do it. Whatever you believe in God for, maybe it's restoration in your marriage. God can do it. Maybe it's healing in your body. And the doctors are saying this it can't happen. You're feeling certain ways in your body. God can do it. God can heal you. God can deliver you. Maybe you're wanting to go to a certain college or you're wanting to go back to school or you don't see how the finances are going to happen. Maybe you want a house and you, God can do it. Maybe you're tired of being the go-to person in your family all the time. God can do it. Whatever you need God to do in your life, God can be that. God can heal. God can be that support. Right? Well, God, I, need, I want to win the lottery. That's, that's a want. That's not a need. 
right? Whatever you need God to do, right, in your body that, that's in line with his word. God, I need to go to Paris. That's a need, man. But if you have a desire to go to Paris, maybe you wanted to, to go for a vacation. God can, he can definitely do that. But what are the other things in order first that you got to take care of, right? God, I want to go to college. Okay, but Shekinah is ninth grade. Going to be in 10th grade soon. There's certain steps she has to be able to take, right, before she can get there. And we as parents, we're preparing her for those steps now. But she can't just go to college and expect, expect to enroll. Why? Because she hasn't met the prerequisite. So some things that we're expecting God to do, or we want God to do, like a vacation in Paris, may, okay, that's great. He can take care of that. But there's some other little things and prerequisites that you've got to take care of first in your life. Right? Are you tight with God? Are you praying daily? Let's just get that straight. Are you talking to the Lord daily? Right? So there's certain things, but whatever you believe in God, they may have said that the situation is dead. They may have said that it's dry. That it can't happen. But like God breathed life into the, the valley of the shallow, the valley of dry bones, and they stood up and they became an exceeding great army. God can do that in your life as well. Where just like the, the prophet of the prophet of Baal, they were turned down, but the prophet Elijah, who called them the name of the Lord, and God answered in an impossible situation. God can do that in your life. He is the God of that can do the impossible. So this is the word of the Lord for today. Sharing about can these dry bones live again? Make sure you give them, first of all, get into a place where you're not dry, where you continue to stay uh, nourished and pliable before the Lord and flexible and be able to be used by him. If you find yourself in a dry place, maybe you haven't prayed for a while because you've been busy. Right. Maybe you're feeling down and tired. Go to the Lord. At least spend some time with him to start your day. There's, as we close, I'm just talking about me now. As we close, uh, I'm like, Lord, I'm tired of going to school. I'm tired of doing certain things, right? She kind of was like, me too, right, me too. Just hang tight. You got, you got some time left. But I got less than a year left. I, you know, I'm trying to double up. I'm less trying to make sure it gets faster. And so it's only less than a year left. Right. But what can I do in, in the meantime? Trust God. Pray. Space out my time so I can still have work, family, ministry. So I got to really be strategic. Right. And certain things I got to do, but make sure I'm, I'm trusting God, going to God so he can be my source, so he can be my uh, uh, recharger of my battery. Same thing with you. Make sure you might be in a situation where you don't see a way out. Okay, cool. So what can you do? Go to the Lord. Ask him to help you balance the load to carry things through. If it seems dry, it's not too dry for, for God. If people count you out, you can always live again. If you walked away from the Lord, as long as there's breath in your body, you can live for him. I read something on Facebook earlier this week. There was somebody that passed away, I think, in the last week. He was 92. It was someone's father. He was 92 years old. This gentleman didn't give his life to the Lord until he was 90. Like two years ago, he came to God. And he lived for God for the past two years, and God called him home. He was 90 years old, and he gave his life to the Lord. That's, that's amazing. Amazing one at, the, at that age that he found God also amazing that God allowed him to live up this life and, you know, that he still had an opportunity to give his life to the Lord. Don't wait till you're 90. Tomorrow's not promised. Seek the Lord while he may be found today. Amen. Amen. Um, I believe that is the word of the Lord. Any questions, any thoughts, anybody needing prayer or anything? We want to make sure we take some time. Um, thank you for your, your obedience to the Lord to come. And share uh, your time with us this morning. You could have been anywhere. And we thank God that you chose to be here. And I know you were, uh, little guy was, was a being little guy. That's, just what, that's what little, little people do. Um, but we thank God for your obedience. Continue to seek the Lord while he may be found. Uh, there's greatness in your life. Uh, and so even, um, I don't know, I, I, well, I do know. 
I, I hear that the, that the Lord said that you're a dreamer, that he talks to you in your dreams, that, you know, that gift is on you as far as it's just part of something that's been in the family of, of having that propheticness at times, I should say, not trying to put anything on you. But what I am seeing that, the, you know, the Lord is talking to you in your dreams. And so don't take that lightly. Begin to write some things down, like especially if you're having reoccurring dreams and just jot some things down. It doesn't have to be a long story, but maybe, hey, May 22nd, I dreamed this. Father, what does it mean? And that's it, right? Just kind of keep a log because the Lord is going to continue to actually do that. Uh, there's going to be some clarity, like fine tuning some that, that comes through your dreams, and he's going to begin to give you revelation behind what you dream. So just be obedient to that um, and watch God do some things and watch God speak. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Um, we're glad that you're here. I was just, okay, Lord, don't say that, but yeah, okay, I'm just, just talking, hearing from the Lord. Um, amen. We're excited today. Pray my strength in the Lord. Uh, just as you all, as you all think about us, pray for us. Um, yeah, we're l looking at a few different things and want to be obedient to God. So, okay, God, this is, what are you saying about this? Right? So pray for us that we hear God. Um, all right. I believe this is it. So we're going to pray. If no one else is needing prayer, let me look at my phone to see if there's anything that came in. Uh, I think we're good. Um, technician back there. So we it froze. What froze? Was the camera froze? Okay, we might need to get a new camera. Um, that's happened a few times. So I'm not. That may be it. So we got a problem to solve. So keep that in prayer as we're. Don't want to spend the money to do it, but we may need to do it to make sure we go for it. All right. So let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Um, we're not dismissing just yet, Father, but we thank you, God, for the, for the word that came forth, Father. God, we thank you, God, for what was shared. Help us to be doers of your word, Father, and stay connected, Father. God, if we're in a dry space or a dry patch in life, God, we know based off the example in Ezekiel that we can be reconnected back to you. God, the situation is not too barren and not too drastic to where we cannot be revitalized. So, Father, we thank you that if there's dryness that's been spoken over us or we don't feel like we're going to make it, we feel like we're just in a dry patch, that we can look to you and have you speak over our situation, that we can speak life instead of speak what we see. Because if Elijah would have spoke what he saw, life wouldn't have happened back in the body, but he spoke what could be. He spoke what, 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 what was formerly, but what could be. And God, that's when you begin to breathe life as he was obedient to say what you say. Help us to be obedient, Father, as men and women of God here to say what you say about our situation. To say, God, I am the well staying well. God, I am all you call me to be. I have the mind of Christ. To say what you say, to pronounce the word of God over our life. We thank you for the encouragement, Father. Thank you for the example of your word. God, those that couldn't make it for whatever reason, God, we thank you for strengthening them, Father. The Lopez family, Father, they said they were going to be here but didn't make it, and you know the reason why. God, have your way in their family and their home. Continue to use them for your glory. Continue to set them free from things that may be trying to, to pull them back in, Father. We thank you, God, for freedom and all of our life, Father, and that because of this day, God, we're growing even closer to you. Father, walking with you is how we do things, God. It's how we live life, and we realize that we are where we're at. God, because of you, Father, because of the greatness in you, God, we have what we have because of you. And God, there's th if we're at a place where we're, not com uh, where we're not satisfied with what we have, God, show us how to have joy in the midst of what we're in. God, we may be in, okay, not enough. We may be in lack. We may be in this. But God, continue to minister to us, Father God, so we can see that you are providing for us every step of the way. We praise you. We honor you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Um, that is it. We're getting ready for offering. And any any words, any last questions or anything before we leave uh, as we prepare for offering and we're getting ready to go home. Um, 
for those watching online and in, in, in person, if you have to give, great. If you don't have it, that's fine too. Um, and it'd be simply give by way of either in person, also Cash App, Arise 78644, PayPal, Arise 78644. Um, so I want to be obedient to that. As we give, watch God do some great things in your life. Um, man, I can't tell you how much that because we've because we've given to the Lord, how the Lord has done great things for us. How he keeps on doing great things for us. Amen. Um, I think this is it. So uh, join us next time. If the Lord says the same next Sunday, uh, we were having Bible studies once a month, once on the first Wednesday of the month, we won't be going back to first Wednesday Bible studies, but we will have Bible studies periodically, just to let you all know. Uh, but uh, stay, stay tuned for further announcements. All right, you all have a wonderful Sunday, um, and we're going to get ready to dismiss. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Uh, God, Father, keep us safe, Father, guys. We leave this place, but never your presence. Bring us back up the next appointed time. And Lord, despite the distractions of the world, help us to live for you. Despite any temptations in our life, help us to live for you. Despite what our friends may be doing or, what, uh, or sometimes even just being distracted with society or with TV shows that aren't necessarily meaning, uh, that's not necessarily meaningful. Help us, God, to focus on you and help us have that balance, Father. Help us to, to, to seek your face and walk with you daily. We honor you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Arise and shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Hey, we love y'all. We're pr uh, praying for you. Pray for us. Um, this is the last week of school for many uh, people, including some of our young people here. So pray for uh, safety. We pray had your protection over you and your schoolmates, uh, that the enemy won't... Uh, rear his head in the name of Jesus. We pray uh, uh, awesome graduation ceremonies and that uh, every young person that graduates in this county, uh, that they will be able to uh, to go on to their next place as far as whether it's trade school, work, college, whatever it might be, that no lives will be snuffed out on graduation night, that everything will be successful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Hey, we'll talk to you all soon, and you can take us out.